This is a cheap microcontroller with a camera that I compiled a video streaming server on. I can use it at home or even in the middle of the forest. It has a Wi-Fi receiver on it so I can connect it to any router and stream to any device that's also connected on that router and has a web browser. Wondering how I made it work in the middle of the forest? Stay tuned to find out but first let me tell you why I made this video. A few weeks ago I made a short video about this microcontroller and asked for 20 comments if people want me to make a full length video about it. I got the comments so this is the video. Next I'm going to show you exactly how I did everything. The module comes in three parts, two boards and one camera. The first step is to connect the hardware. The camera in the camera slot here and the two boards together using the pins. This board helps me write the streaming server on this board and also helps with powering the board. More on that soon. Next, I have to connect the computer to my board. I'm using a USB to micro USB cable and when I connected it to the M1 Mac Pro, I could not see the board. I guess Apple Silicon still needs work, especially for Arduino or ESP32 boards. When I tried Ubuntu Linux, it was not as easy as I hoped as I killed my entire graphical user interface trying to connect the board to Linux. On Windows 10, however, I found the driver, installed it and I was able to see the communication port to the board in device manager. Now comes the coding. First I installed Arduino IDE and then the libraries to support the ESP32 boards. I needed to have the board available in my list here to tell the IDE what kind of board it's supposed to compile the code to. As for coding, I didn't have to do much since I have an example for this exact board on how to do a full streaming server. I just select it here, but I did need to make two important and specific code changes. I need to set the router name and password here of the router that I'm connecting to. This way when I power on the board, it just connects to the router automatically. I don't have to do anything. Now I just click this and compile the code to the board. After that's done, I need to check what IP the little board was given. So I check the serial monitor. And because in the code example, there's some code that prints in the console the IP. Once the board powers on and server starts, I can see the IP. And now I can take that IP and put it into any browser that's connected to the same router as the board. A note here, you cannot connect multiple devices at the same time to stream from the board just one device at a time. And I get this web interface that's running on the board that's also configuring the streaming server however you want. Next, let's see how to use it far away from my home Wi-Fi. First of all, the board needs power. I'm using a power bank and I just connect to the cable with the micro USB port that I used before to compile the code. When I turn the power bank on, the board code will start the server and maybe you can see this little LED flashing. It's going to connect to the Wi-Fi and the router that I told it to in the code automatically. Then when I put this IP in a browser on a device connected to the same router as the board, I see a web page with some settings. I can configure stuff like resolution, I can flip the camera and this little thing even has face detection. Isn't that cool? There are many options to choose from that you can play a lot with. All you need to connect to the board now is power and a Wi-Fi router and you can stream live video from it. The range inside between the board and the router is about 4 meters or 13 feet of a straight uninterrupted line. As soon as I go around the corner, the video feed stops. That's because the Wi-Fi on this little board is very weak. The camera is not exactly great either, but the video stream depends on the resolution and it can go up to 60 frames per second on the lowest resolution. But that also depends on how far you are from the router because if you're far enough, it's not going to work as well. Next, let's see how that holds out outside the house. So let's make things interesting and figure out how to solve the router problem because one, there's usually no router in the forest and two, the device is obviously working somehow. Here's the trick, I'm using my iPhone as a hotspot. I wrote the code to connect to it and compiled the code back home and now whenever I turn on the power, the device automatically connects to the iPhone. Out here, this is the router. The range I get outside seems a little bit better, but not by a lot. So the iPhone is sitting down here, streaming data from this device right here. And I'm connected to the iPhone as a router with my OnePlus phone. And I'm going far, far, far away. You can see me in the right corner down there. This is more than four meters and I'm still visible. This is pretty far 
you can see the little white power bank there. This is way more than 4 meters or 13 feet, like double. I wonder how far can I go? And the camera is over there. The range now is considerably bigger. It's just limited by the hardware of your two phones, the iPhone and the Android in this case. And with that, I pretty much covered this video. Thanks for watching. I'm Chip. See you next time.